It's February 2024 and Printify has replaced their mock-up generator design tool with a new way to create your products and preview your mock-ups called the Product Creator. Let's take a few minutes and walk through the new layout. All right, so let's take a look at the new product creator from Printify, which used to be called the mock-up generator. Essentially, this is going to be the new view for you to create your products and place the design on products as well as preview your mock-ups. So if you have existing products, just go to your My Products page and click on the paintbrush on one of your products, just like you always would, and that will open the new product creator view. And as I said, you can also go to the catalog and select a new product. If you don't currently have a product that you'd like to copy from your shop, click on any of the new product listings and then select a print provider, click on start designing and you will be launched into the new product creator. Now this new product creator view doesn't actually incorporate any brand new features. It's more of a redesign than a complete overhaul. So it will make several of my old videos look a little bit confusing now because I've showed this many, many times in the past and it looks a little different. In terms of navigation though, it is pretty simple. You have a left menu here. Instead of everything being on the right now, you've got a left menu that's got your options for your layers, including uploading a new image file, adding an individual text layer, looking at your library of already uploaded files, the free available graphics that Printify provides, your saved templates, if you have saved any templates, which you can include multiple layers with and then save as a template. There's still a paid content section, which connects you to Shutterstock and gives you options to actually buy graphic elements to use in your designs. There is a services option, which can connect you with either Fiverr or Printify Expert. So basically you can hire somebody from Fiverr to create your design, or you can get connected with the Printify Experts program from here. And lastly, they have their AI image generator. This is a relatively newer feature that I haven't made a video about. It works very similarly to the AI image generators that are built into some of the tools out there like Creative Fabrica and Kittle and Vexels. Basically, you just select a style, then you put in a prompt and it will generate an image for you. Everybody gets 15 of these daily and it refreshes every 24 hours. There's also a background removal tool that you can use if you generate an image like say this, this dog here and maybe you like the image, but you don't want the background. So for example, let's say I generated one of these in the past here, sunflower images here. Let's say I use this one in my image. It comes through into my design area here. I can then make it larger and I can use one of these tools that pops up at the top. You get this banner across the top once you have selected or added a layer here that gives you a bunch of options. You still have controls over here on the right for the sizing and the positioning as well as pattern creation. So that is still part of the menu that shows up on the right here. But the menu across the top used to kind of hover over the image and now it is sort of docked to the top here. And this is where you can flip it. You can select different fill options. There is actually a pattern toggle up here on the top as well, but there is also a background remover up here and it's this little person looking image. So if we click on that, it will pop open the background remover where you can actually manually remove it like this with a brush and it will let you do that. And that's easy to do if you have, you know, really large, obvious edges, but you also have three times per day that you can use the quick remove feature where it will automatically remove the background for you. And then there's also a reset button here so that you can go back or you can just X out of it if you don't want to apply that change that you made. One thing I do want to point out is that the AI generated images from what I have seen usually give me a low resolution message when I try to use them on large prints like on clothing, like on t-shirts. So I don't know if the AI images on Printify are really up to using on larger prints. They definitely should be able to be used for things like stickers, smaller prints, smaller items. But you may want to generate your images on one of the other platforms which give you a larger image if you're trying to use them for a poster or a t-shirt or sweatshirt. I'll add one of my images here just so you can see those controls one more time. This is more of a classic flat PNG image that I have uploaded. And you can see you have controls up here at the top. So we can flip our images horizontally and vertically. We can choose fill options if that's easy for you. I like to use those more often on a solid image like a, on a poster or something like that. One other small feature here that's relatively new to Printify that I don't believe I've covered previously is the ability to crop here in the image editor. You do have a cropping tool up here. So if you have part of an image that that you don't want to use and it lines up sort of in a straight line that is something you want to crop out, you can use the cropping tool to actually crop the image in your design. 
Now, I just made kind of an odd looking design that way, but that was just a demonstration. And you also still have the option to duplicate a layer with that copy button, just like that at the top, as well as the option to apply a graphic to all areas. And that's something that's more commonly you might use on an all over print. One other thing I wanna point out that is a little different is your product info is over here in the left corner. And this is not anything to do with your design or your print files, but the actual product itself. So if we click on this little info button, you get a pop-up with the details of the product that you selected. So if you forgot something about, you know, the availability, the in-stock status or the different color options or how much it costs to actually print, you can pop open this and expand the details. You can even click see details and it actually brings up all the product variants and the pricing. So that's something you can now expand over here. You can actually have this open by default when you um, create new designs and if you don't want to see it by default you just check this little box to say hide this when I first enter the product creator. Now, if you get yourself in a position where you need to sort of recenter this on the bottom left you still have the option to click on the little hand tool and you can move this around to get it positioned so that it is where it is most easily viewable for you. So that is still nice that they have that down there. Now back towards the right side of the screen, you do still have your control over variants there as well. So as you can see, it tells you which colors you currently have. You can click on select variants and you have the option to select or deselect the sizes for apparel as well as all of your different uh, color options here. And then you can of course switch between your different color options just like you could before. And you still have the ability to edit the print file settings for an individual color option. So if maybe for example, for this asphalt color, maybe I have a file that's sort of the inverse of this where everything is white instead of all black. So I could create a specific design for that one, delete this file and then upload the one that's all white. And then I'd have this as an option within the same listing, but just showing a different color that that better fits the color of the shirt. And your layer control will be over here on the right as well. So if I add another graphic element, you'll kind of see the layer control here. Now let's say I added this as a layer and I wanted it to be behind the other image in my design. All I'd have to do is come over to the layer controls on the right and go down to the one that's on the bottom here. Look for this dot menu here where the little hand appears, grab that and pull it up so that it is on top of the other layer and it will swap the order of your layers. So you still have full layer control over here on the right as well. The only other thing I'll point out is you can actually hide this whole variance in layers by clicking in the top right corner here. That, that little um, sort of pencil and ruler icon there is your edit tools. So you can, if you need to, if you've got something that you need to really see on full screen, you can hide that as well and then bring it back when you need it. Let's just take a look at the preview view here and then we can wrap this up. So your preview view is pretty much the same as it was before. In the bottom left corner of the screen is still where you have the button to download individual mockups. So if you're going to edit them separately, if you need to upload them manually to your uh, sales channel, you can download them individually by selecting the one that you wanna download and clicking that bottom left corner button. And then when it's available, you can still toggle between the realistic and the bright and colorful mock-up options. So you can have it basically display in the converted CMYK color profile versus what it's uploaded as, which is RGB. And of course, that is more important for like bright and colorful designs to show them in a more realistic way. And for some products, you can also still add your own background. This is available for apparel and I believe mugs and a few other products, but not everything yet, where you can actually upload your own background image like say this living room scene here, I can add this as a background into the uh, mockups that have a person. And for my lay flat mockups, I can upload a background that's maybe like a nice wood background with my store's branding in the corner. So it looks a little bit better than just that plain white background. I do actually have a separate video about these backgrounds. So check that out if you're interested. And from there, we just click on save product as we normally would and proceed with listing. If this was a new listing or republishing, if we made changes to an existing listing, and that's pretty much it. There's not a ton of differences there with the product creator versus the old mockup generator but thought it was worth walking through because it is gonna look different to you when you first go in here after your, uh, your account receives the update. So hope that was helpful for you. Let me know down in the comments if it was or if you have any questions. Do me a favor and hit that like button if it was helpful for you and don't forget to subscribe to the POD Insights channel. Thanks everybody, see you next time.